Good morning. Um, today we are going to be taking some notes. Um, you can find them on the Google Classroom underneath your classwork tab. Um, they are called Notes 922. If you open them up, okay, um, you'll see uh, the link for my YouTube channel if you need it. Um, and you have your note slides. Once you open them up, again, you'll see the red text box are there for you to fill out. In order to fill them out, you'll want to click on that, and then you will type in the appropriate word, okay? And then you'll look for the words that are bold and blue on the note slide to find the correct word. Please feel free to re-watch or go over any of these notes. Again, if you miss any of the words, um, to make sure that you're getting all of the important information. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So what types of sources do historians use? We have talked about the two main types of sources, primary and secondary sources already. Primary sources, again, are sources that are created during a specific time or event and can be artifacts, can be documents, can be clothing um, that, again, were created during a specific time or event by someone who participated or lived in that time. Secondary sources, on the other hand, are created after the fact and by someone that was not directly involved in the event. So a great example of a secondary source would be a textbook. So continuing with that conversation today, one downfall of primary sources is that they are not necessarily better than secondary sources because not all sources are of equal value in helping a historian study an event. For example, if you want to know what a soldier's life was like during the American Revolution, a diary from a woman staying at home with the kids is not going to be as helpful to you, even though it's a primary source. A historian does three things when deciding if a source is good or not. First, they need to separate between facts and opinions. They need to check for internal consistencies or contradictions. And they need to check for external consistency or contradiction. for facts versus opinions, it's important to remember that a fact is something that is true about a subject and can be tested or proven. An opinion is what someone thinks about the subject. Internal consistencies or contradictions. Internal means within a single document. So if you are looking at a letter from a soldier from the American Revolution, you're going to look inside that single document. Inconsistencies are in facts are presented differently, which may make the document inaccurate. So at first he might tell you that it's winter and that it's really cold but might forget to tell you other things like where they were staying who was there so it doesn't always match up with the information that is out there contradictions the facts presented cannot be true and clash with each other so at first, he might tell you that they didn't have any food to eat 
and then he might talk about the big meal that he ate on Sunday. Those facts don't match up. They clash with each other. You can't have no food and then eat a big meal. External inconsistencies or contradictions. External means when you're comparing multiple documents. So again, you might be reading letters from multiple soldiers to study the American Revolution. Those are going to be external. If the facts don't all line up between those documents, you might have some inconsistent or false information. Inconsistently, again, means facts are presented differently, which may make the document inaccurate. So in one letter, you could see someone talking about them staying at Valley Forge in the summer. But then in another letter, they talk about staying at Valley Forge in the winter. Those would, contra those would be inconsistent with each other and can cause confusions when we study the past. Contradictions, facts in two documents do not match and both cannot be true. So again, if they start talking in one letter about how wonderful it was staying at Valley Forge, everybody was healthy and there was a lot of food, and then you read another letter and it says a lot of people were dying from illness and they had no food and it was very cold. Those contradict one another and both letters cannot be true. So you might have inaccurate information. If you need to rewatch any part of this video to fill in any of the blanks, or if you have any questions, now will be the time to do so. Otherwise, you can go ahead, go back to the Google Classroom and complete the letter from Paris, applying what we just talked about to evaluate a document, to find facts and opinions, compare internal inconsistencies or contradictions, as well as to test your knowledge and check for external inconsistencies or contradictions. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys later.